It's your friend Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about why that CPU per database query is pretty stupid. Uh, I didn't realize until I signed up for LinkedIn um, how much awful content there was out there about, like, I mean, well, SQL Server in particular, because I can sniff that out, but uh, just data stuff in general. Like, every day my feed is just absolutely inundated with these chat GPT posts that are like, like top 10 rock star SQL performance tips, avoid select star dude. And you're like, what? Like, I, if I ever catch one of these people in person, I'm gonna smack them. Like it's just the dumbest, most regurgitated advice that I've ever heard in my life. And I don't know, I don't understand how it gets so much engagement. Like, I feel like LinkedIn has an algorithm that looks for its own like AI nonsense and boosts it. Like anything that has like like crappy emojis to as bullet points, it's like the world needs to see this. So check out this AI advancement. <laughs> You're like, oh god. This is why I start drinking early. Anyway, uh, before we talk about that. Uh, let's let's do the housekeeping stuff. Uh, if, if you if you feel monetarily motivated to to support my channel, um, you can sign up for a membership. Uh, there were there were some comments in the comments recently about how someone couldn't see a way to sign up for memberships. Um, and it re so if you're watching it on like watching it like a, using the YouTube app on a device, uh, you won't see it. <laughs> Apparently, you have to be using a web browser. Um, so what I've done to circumvent all these issues is I scoured the depths of Google and I found the URL that you need to use, which is apparently your channel URL slash join. As a database person, I feel particularly stupid that I did not try a join. Uh, but that, that link will go in all of the videos going forward and I also uh, am going to uh, backport that to uh, older videos so that um, everyone can use the join sign up link and be happy. Uh, if, you, if you find yourself in a situation where, oh, you don't have an extra four or so dollars a month in your pocket and that you feel like sharing with little old me, uh, you, can, you can support my channel in other ways. You can like posts and you can, videos, video posts, and you can sub comment on them. And you can also subscribe to the channel and join now 4,300 data darlings out there in the world who also subscribe to my channel and get pleasant little tinkly notifications every time I publish something. Uh, if you are in need of SQL Server help, if you need a health check, performance analysis, hands-on tuning, if you are having a SQL Server emergency, or you want to, me to train your developers so that you have fewer SQL Server emergencies, as always, my rates are reasonable. If you want just some, tr some training, you can get a whole bunch of it for about 150 bucks US uh, if you go to that URL or click on the link in the video description and uh, you use the, the discount code spring cleaning. Um, you can get all of that for 75% off, which is, is pretty, pretty good. Uh, once again, this image is generated by ChatGPT. I did not make spelling mistakes. I think it's funny how bad ChatGPT is at things. Uh, and I will talk some about something that I caught chat, chat GPT being wrong about this morning when we're talking through the demos. But if you want to see me live and in person, and you are the type of person, you can, you can see the, the dates and places there, and you are the type of person who needs bribes to show up to things, I have uh, Darling Data pins, which are a little hard to see uh, because of the glare and the bright lights. And I also have uh, these hot SQL action pins, which are very hard to see because of the glare and the bright lights, but I, I can assure you they are absolutely magnificent. I also have sparkly darling data stickers. Ooh la la, look at that, look at the sparkles. So if that, if that didn't hypnotize you into coming to see me, um, I don't know what will. So I have pointy bribes and I have sticky bribes, and I hope at least one of them works on you. Anyway, uh, now let's, with my, my brand new redesigned ready to party slide. Let's, let's, let's do this, right? Got sick of all the white space and decided to, uh, to, to spruce things up a little bit. Now, uh, so I wanna make sure everyone out there knows that says let's party. 
these, they're, these are not fencing videos, so it does not say let's parry. And these are not baking videos, so it does not say let's pastry. We are, we are going to party. We are not going to parry or pastry or any mix of the two. All right. Anyway, uh, at some point in your long, glorious database career, you probably will have seen a query that looks something like this, where you go and look at sys.dm exec query stats, and you look at sys.dm exec plan attributes to get the database ID out, and you group the CPU by the database ID, and then you do some fancy math to figure out what percent of the CPU on the server is occupied by query plans that do this stuff, right? Or that did stuff for a in a database. Um, this can be very weird for a lot of reasons. Um, and we'll, we're, we're going to talk about all of them because uh, it needs to be talked about lest you think that this is a good idea. Uh, I guess if, you, if, you have nothing, if there's nothing else for you to do, you're that bored in your life, I guess this is... If you're like the average no-lock enjoyer, this might be an okay query for you to run to get a crappy idea of which database uses the most CPU. Um, this can be wrong for a number of reasons. Uh, if anything has disturbed the plan cache, uh, either in total or in part, um, you know, uh, restarts, memory pressure, changing settings, uh, queries with recompile hints, uh, someone running DBCC free proc cache, um, uh, updating statistics and having plans get, in, get invalidated, and all sorts of other things. Um, they can really hide stuff. Um, so this really isn't a great query. Uh, actually, another thing that can make work look weird is if queries originate in a different database than the database they're querying, that can also cause some issues. So this is, you know, uh, not a very good query practically for most people to use. If you're on a server and you really have no idea which database uses the most CPU, uh, that, that's a little bit silly. Um, on my server, or rather on my laptop, uh, it's a rather stable place. Um, you know, I, I don't, at least at the moment, because I've, preparing, I've been preparing for this, I don't have a lot to do on here uh, that would mess things up. But we could add a few things to this query to make it a little bit more useful. I still probably wouldn't use this as like the ultimate arbiter of truth about which database uses the most CPU, but you could at least spruce things up a little bit so that there's some better information in there. Stuff like uh, getting the oldest plan and the newest plan and the total query execution count for each database can get you somewhat better information about what's going on like on the server as a whole or at least give you some contextual information to help you, you know, figure out if this is actually a good piece, bit, bit of information for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't know where that came from. I may have swallowed a fly. Uh, so in, in, for this, we have uh, the total CPU. We have the total query execution count. I don't know that this is necessarily the order I would present this in if I were trying to, you know, uh, make this a pretty report. But it, it's it's pretty okay, for, at least for this video. Uh, and you know, it might help a little bit to figure out. You know, it's like, well, do I have a few really hard hitting queries, or do I have a lot of queries that just kind of do stuff? Maybe help you figure that out. But then this plan cache aged uh, column up here, that that'll tell you the difference um, in well, days, uh, hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds uh, w between the oldest plan and the newest plan in your cache. If that number is very big, you might have a little bit more confidence than if that number is very small. But there's one thing that can always mess this up, and that is uh, recompile hints or stuff getting removed from the plan cache. So uh, if I run this, I, this should remove one of the plans from the cache for the Stack Overflow Clean database, at least if I did, did my math right. And now the Stack Overflow Clean, which used to be second up here, is now way down here with almost nothing on it. So a plan getting removed from the plan cache can really pull that out. Where that's also true is if you use recompile hints. So if I run this query with a recompile hint, Right? And this, little, this thing will take about four seconds, but it uses a pretty good chunk of CPU. That was the big chunk of CPU that was in the results before that's not there now. And then we look here. Oops, you know what? I forgot. To, you know, okay, actually, this is illustrative. So this is all the... I actually meant to show you this just later. Uh, 
<laughs> but this is all the crap that you get in the plan cache that, 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 that this query will count as being responsible for uh, the, the databases using CPU. So there's just like a whole bunch of like background system stuff that can happen in there. But focusing in on the query that we care about, which is the one that has that funny looking GUID in the text, uh, if we run that query with a recompile hint, it will not be in the plan cache. And we will not know that anything ever happened with it, right? So if we come up here and we look, and please don't fail me, <laughs> please don't fail me now, and we look at this, Stack Overflow Clean, even though we just ran a query that took four minutes of wall clock time and about 20 seconds, of, 23 seconds of CPU time, that doesn't show up in here. So recompile hints alone can make this query pretty useless. Uh, if we come down here and we run this without the recompile hint, we just run this thing, and that's another four seconds. And if we look at the query plan, we can, I'll show you what I mean about the, oops, go away tooltip. We don't need you. We need the properties. And we look at the query time stats. I said query time stats. There is about 22 seconds of CPU right there, which, would, which, which with a recompile hint is totally unaccounted for. If we come and look at this query now, where we're searching for that funny looking gooey thing in there, now it'll show up and we'll see the execution count. We'll see the worker time. But with, you know, without, the, without, without the recompile hint on it, you know, that, that's fine. But with the recompile hint, that all disappears. So coming back up here and looking, we should see our friend up in here. Now Stack Overflow Clean has an additional 20, 22 seconds of CPU time associated with it. But again, if we, if we remove that query from the plan cache, it'll, it'll, all, it'll all disappear. So... This is not a great query for actually figuring something out. Again, if you have absolutely nothing better and you just, and you want like the worst, again, uh, like the average no lock enjoyer style of data, return data, if you really just don't care that much and you just want like a bad idea uh, of, of which database uses the most CPU without any, anything else uh, contextually around it, you can use that query. Then you can probably get a bunch of wrong information back, just like the average no lock enjoyer. Now, I promised you a funny story about ChatGPT, so here it is. Uh, while I was working up to this, um, one of the things that, uh, you know, because I love picking on optimized for ad hoc workloads, one of the things that I was looking into was uh, if the compiled plan stub queries would show up in DM exec query stats, which, you know, they did. But since it was a, it was a, it was a, something that I had to like sort of answer for myself because I had never specifically looked at it, I decided to say, hey, chat GPT, do queries, if I turn on, in SQL Server, if I turn on optimize for ad hoc workloads, do the queries that get a plan stub, will their, their CPU, like will their resource usage show up in sys.dm exec query stats? And chat GPT was like, no, won't do it. Uh, they won't be in there until the second execution when they get a full-blown plan, and then they'll be in DM exec query stats, and then you'll be able to see them. And I'm sitting here staring at SQL Server, <laughs> with, completely contradicting that. Uh, and uh, I, was, I was amused by it, and I was like, hey, ChatGPT, can you write me a query that would prove that? So it prints out this query that looks at, you know, uh, sys.dm exec query stats and cache plans, and, uh, you know, sort of like up above, it gets the database ID out. And um, then in cache plans, it matches the plan handle there to sys.dm exec query stats and the database ID for both of those. And it was like, yeah, here you go. And so I ran it. And of course, I had a bunch of hits between <laughs> uh, uh, cache plans and query stats. And so I came back. I was like, hey, chat GPT, uh, your, your queries re returning rows, I think, I think they do show up in there. And ChatGPT was like, you're right. I was totally wrong about that. Cash plans, <laughs> compiled plan stubs do show up in there. Here's a query that'll prove it. And I reprinted the query that it just showed me when I asked it to prove that they wouldn't show up in there. So for God's sake, stop caring about AI. Uh, it's, it's, it's always wrong. It's, it's always wrong about these things. Um, you, you should think of, of, chat GP, of, of, of any AI uh, as being sort of like a, um, like a, like an, like a pretend you have like an administrative assistant uh, and, you know, nothing that like you might ask an administrative assistant to like write up a short summary of something for you or take some notes. But then you would also validate it. 
Um, you would, like if you asked you know, your administrative assistant to say, hey, come up with a report that shows me these things, you, you would probably want to make sure that you wouldn't like, you know, grab that report and then like run to a board meeting with it. You would, you would probably check the numbers first. So um, if you are out there in the world uh, really sweating AI and thinking that it's going to change <laughs> your life and it's going to take your job, um, it, it, it's, it's not quite there yet. You, you, you don't have a lot to worry about. Um, it's, it's, it's actually a rather sad state of affairs. So anyway, that, that's my amusing slash depressing chat GPT uh, conversation from this morning. And of course, uh, chat GPT is what uh, backs Copilot. Uh, you know, there's other ones out there like, you know, Claude and stuff. And Claude is a little bit better, but uh, Claude, Claude got this one wrong too. <laughs> so, you know, <sighs> AI. What, 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 what can you do except laugh at people who think it's good for anything? All right. Well, that's about enough here. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, for the record, I will not be publishing the, any of the, the queries from this because I still find them equally useless. Um, I should actually, before I wrap up, I should give you a, a couple ways that are better at doing this. Uh, if you're on Enterprise Edition of SQL Server, you can use Resource Governor, assuming that different databases have different logins associated with them. Uh, and that, that would be one way to sort of uh, get a rough idea of which workload groups for which database we are using the most CPU, because it does track that. Uh, the other thing that you could do is if you are on a reasonable version of SQL Server, and by reasonable I mean it's at least 2016, uh, you could also use Query Store. Uh, and Query Store is a bit more historical uh, than, uh, than other other, other than, the, than the plan cache and you could go to each database and you know the SP whatever in each for each around each <laughs> some preposition each uh, database and you could hit the query store uh, DMVs to figure out which ones uh, have the most kind of CPU usage in there that would give you a, a much closer idea to reality um, because you know query store usually generally has like I think by default like 30 days of data in it which is probably a much better indication of which databases are using a lot of CPU. So uh, the plan cache query these days, real stupid, old and busted. Um, you know, I think you know, resource governor and query store are two much better options. So with that finally out of the way, once again, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope that uh, you will join the 4,300 other data darlings who, uh, who, who subscribe to this channel and uh, get notified when I drop videos because that's it's a it's a it's probably a pretty good group it's probably better than the group of people who generate AI content for LinkedIn and and all that and uh, people who think that they can use that plan cache query to, to figure out which databases have the most CPU work on the server because um, ship of fools isn't it ship of fools anyway uh, thank you for watching. I have other videos to record, as you can see by the numerous tabs up top. So I'm going to close this depressing one, <laughs> and uh, we're going to do something else. I don't know what's next. I haven't decided yet. Um, we'll, we'll, you'll find out when we get there, I guess. All right. Thank you for watching. My rates are reasonable. <laughs>